you asked for it, I'm getting it for you today. Maybe one of the best no slide couples models I think I might have ever seen. Hello everybody, welcome to Bish's RV. My name is Josh the RV Nerd and behind us is an RV that literally tricked me. And I mean that in the best way possible. At the time this video rolls out, I've got about 15 years of experience looking at campers. I'm basically a professional looker at her and talker about her of campers. Those are technical terms. That's my actual job description. And when I went through this one, uh, you know, it's like farmers. I know a thing or two because I've seen a thing or two just off pure experience. And I went through, I said, okay, it's a Murphy bed. All right, small camper. Okay, nice bathroom. Okay, nice pantry. And then I went, ooh, you've got this nice little breakfast bar, dining bar, right off the campsite of the RV with a Euro window to get sweet airflow. But at the same time, it actually has a pull down bug screen, which a lot of the Euro style windows do not. So I'm like, okay, this is a really good camper. I looked through it a little further. Like I said, really nice pantry space kind of caught me off guard in a pleasant way. Um, also, it's a little bit taller inside, so I can stand in the shower. I like how the Murphy uh, sofa has those kick-out recliners. When the bed's down, you have headboard power pockets. You've got wide stance stability axles for easy towing on an RV that's not, I don't even know if it's 24 feet long. It's right on that cusp. It's lightweight, uh, but it has a really good cargo capacity, so you can actually tow small and camp large in this little thing. And that's the thing that threw me off. I walked out of the camper and it had such a big spacious feel, it tricked me. The rep was standing right there and he looked at me and said, not too bad for a no slide camper, huh? And I stopped dead in my tracks with one foot in the air getting ready to walk out of the camper. I turned around and I took a second look at this thing and I went, oh my gosh, this is a no slide camper. It felt so big inside that even with my experience, it made me think it had a slide out. It has slide out comfort and space in a no slide, lighter weight, easier to maintain kind of model. There's no road mode. It's just good to go all the time. There's a lot of really, really good things going on with this one. They've uh, standardized a little bit better solar package than they had, heated belly, tank heaters, bigger air conditioner, and a lot of other things. Vibe is a brand that has kind of come out of nowhere that I think might be worth putting on your radar. And I know I just kind of verbally walked you through it, but I want to actually like physically walk you through what my experience was like the first time I saw one of these. So starting right over here at the entry door, pardon the little clack as I close the door behind me to help keep the wind out of the microphone. But this is like probably most people, the first thing that I saw when I walked into the RV, I started kind of going through it. Some people are not going to like the fact this does not have a propane oven. That's a convection uh, microwave down there. And it's a two burner north south stovetop, which I actually think as a silly Midwestern boy is a really awesome way to go because it maximizes my kitchen storage in a minimal amount of space while still providing, generally speaking, the features that I need. Now, there's going to be some folks like nobody, no oven, no sale, and I respect you. I don't think you're silly at all. I think that different people camp in different ways, and this RV speaks to me. Maybe you don't think it does, and I'd love to hear your feedback either way. But then, as I kind of wrapped around the corner, I went, okay, nice. I Like, I'm a fan. Instead of a booth dinette or a table and chairs... I'm a really big fan of these kind of couples bar dining sort of situations right here because whether it's one or two of you, and this is definitely at best a couples camper. This is not a family guest camper. If that's the kind of RV you're looking for, wrong camper. Definitely not for you. Um, but sitting right here, looking dead out your, your big window, and the thing is, these are uh, like a, uh, a, a two-section Euro-style window, and the fact that the window is actually not clean may help you sort of discern that. You can see how, as I move the camera around, the outside and the inside smudges don't exactly line up. But here's kind of the brilliant thing. Most of these Euro windows don't have any sort of bug screen, and this one does. Well, not most of them. Some of them do, some of them don't. This one actually does, which is kind of cool. Um, and if you keep that screen down, you can make sure the bugs always stay out. Not every Euro-style window does that. But they were really smart about outlet placement in this. You've got some USB Type A and Type C's over there. And all of our like kitchen and dining counter in this, it's all a solid surface, which I think is sort of cool. And then right down below here, we've got our control panel. Normally, I don't like control panels down low like that. But in this model, not being a family camper, I think it's actually a really smart point of execution. 
Because what it allows you to do, if you're sitting outside and want to open the awning, you can literally just pop the entry door open and open or close the awning. You don't have to go in and out. Um, this is also, uh, two things surprised me up here. Despite the small size of this camper, they've maintained their 15,000 BTU air conditioner. And if it was non-centralized, like right now we've got the air conditioner basically dumping the cold air right here in the living cavity. If you flick those little vents shut, it actually still is centrally ducted. So we've got a bigger air conditioner and a smaller camper that can uh, evenly distribute. And even though this is a little tight from the factory, these can turn and close individually so that you can really direct your airflow, which I thought was a really nice touch. And as I went through this, I kept finding more little points of smart feature and execution. For instance, I noticed this window treatment over here was a little bit different. And that a lot of times manufacturers will not make these vertical toothpick windows open for airflow. This one does. What you have over here um, is uh, basically like a Roman shade. So if you really want to blot the sun out, you can do that. But they used a different kind of window treatment that wasn't so big, bulky, and boxy to make sure that if you open those wardrobe towers, it's not going to fight and affect anything. Now, you're actually getting a sneak peek at something I'm going to show you later, how those are all soft close and magnet holdback, which I think is cool. And then as I kept turning around, because again, I'm just sort of walking you through my original adventure of this, I kind of backed my butt over here into the bathroom where I'm at currently. And I looked down and I said, okay, we're carpetless, we're ventless, we're very pet friendly. You can see some heat vents coming out from under the convection microwave over there on the left. And I'm like, this is nice and wide open. Okay, I'm pretty happy with what I got here. And part of the reason it looks and feels so big is that um, that dining bar and the Murphy bed, by pulling the bed out of the way a little bit, it really opens up the space in here very nicely. So I started diving around this area. I found household and USB outlets on both sides of the sofa, which I thought was absolutely awesome. You do have those couple little uh, throw pillows right there, you know, if you want to kind of, well, throw them at the neighbors. I don't know. Maybe their dogs are barking. I don't recommend actually doing that, by the way. I would have maybe preferred drawers versus those pockets, but it's not terrible because those pockets don't go super, super deep. I didn't think that they were really going to be that much of a problem. And then I said, okay, well, I kind of like what I'm seeing so far. Let me take a look at how this uh, Murphy bed is sort of arranged and operates. Now, keep in mind, as we shift over to Murphy bed view here, I do need to convert you over into wide angle lens mode. But it is all, uh, and it's one of the easier Murphy beds I've manipulated in recent times. I do want to mention that it is what I call a bendy bed. It's a folding mattress and it is a short queen. Here's the thing though. When that bed is open, and I'm going to actually show you this in more detail later, but if you don't want a Murphy bed, if you don't care, you can just leave the bed down. You can replace it with a true queen if you wanted to. That means that you will lose your sofa doing that, so it's a give and a take, but this RV does allow you options. Or what you can do is get a six inch spacer block and use the folding mattress, put the spacer block at the headboard area of the bed, and scoot the whole mattress down basically when you open it. So you, you have some solutions here. That being said, I've never been a big fan of most factory mattresses. If you want to replace it, it's going to be a little bit of a trick. It's always going to be a little bit of a square peg at a round hole. And if anybody uh, watching this, if, if you've replaced your Bendy Bed RV Murphy bed, um, what did you replace it with? Where did you get it? Could you like leave a link in the uh, in your, your comment so that we could figure out maybe some good place? Because I don't really know. I don't know good places to do that kind of stuff, you know? You may have noticed too the sofa has those kick out incliners. You've got the headboard power pockets. And when you're sitting at the sofa, if you're stuck inside on a rainy day, that's not a bad entertainment solution for a small camper. That's also a 12 volt TV, which is kind of interesting. Now, if you're sitting here, at the, the breakfast bar, the dining bar, or almost like a, it, it could be a laptop warrior desk. I have certainly done some serious laptop work and video editing in much smaller conditions. I could totally make that work. I could even maybe put a second monitor over there, use uh, a second monitor, my screen and the TV as like a triple screen system. I could make that work totally, totally, but that's just me. Now these are six foot nine tall inside, which also helps the RV look and feel big. And overall, the color palette is neutral upon neutral, but it's also on the lighter side of things, and it's the kind of color palette where if you decided to get 
um, like a, uh, a a throw blanket and a couple pillows. It really comes to life in here very quickly, the exact way that uh, you want it to, which I think is kind of cool. Now, what I haven't noticed, let me kind of take a little bit of a knee here. Uh, yes, okay. Under that overhead cabinet, you see some power outlets. The kitchen is a little bit limited in that regard, which is funny because the, the sofa and the dining both do really well. I kind of, I would almost like like a pop-up power tower, I don't know, maybe right behind the sink. I don't like that near a water source. Maybe we could have put one over here. I'm not sure. Anyway, what do you think about that idea? Oh, that's, that's one of the very few kind of dings I'm going to put against the kitchen over here. Their doors are interesting. I haven't seen something like this in a long time. It's a one-piece door. Um, if, if you're actually uh, looking at this, it's like all one chunk, I think... It might be like a painted press board. I think that's what this might be. I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to have to uh, double check on that. But then it's basically um, cupped in. It's routed inside of that, like almost like a CNC route machine type thing. And uh, as a result, there's no seams. But what that means is like you say, it's a particle board press board door. I get that that's spooky. A lot of residential doors are that way. There's no little corner seams where stuff can fall apart. So I think that was kind of cool. Here's, ooh, actually... Let me double check this. Okay, these are stapled cabinet fasteners, and here's a way that you can uh, check that. I'm gonna I'm gonna teach you how to fish right here. Take your phone, put it in selfie mode, and look back behind there, and that will actually show you how the cabinet styles and rails are put together in any RV that you look at, whether it's a Vibe or anything else. That's a way that you can see for sure. Hopefully, you appreciate the little pro tip right there. Now, uh, the uh, I like the big farm sink. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of those. And getting that little sink cover out of the way, looking around. At first glance, I was disappointed under the sink because the, the blank panel is actually an access panel. I was sort of hoping for wastebasket storage space under the sink. The overhead cabinet space in this is amazing, though, uh, because, you know, they threw that shelf in there and the RV six foot nine tall. So it has some really serious overhead cabinet space. But the thing is, next to the refrigerator, which I feel almost opens the wrong way, but next to the refrigerator across from it, you have a huge walk-in pantry with the wastebasket that I was looking for earlier in the kitchen. So they actually solved for the problem I was looking for. They just do, didn't do it in the way that I expected. But I'm not mad at how they did it because it's kind of nice to keep the garbage sort of out of the way, you know. Um, overall, the kitchen storage in such a small RV, I think is amazing. I think the kitchen could benefit from maybe a little more outlet focus and, um, some folks are going to say an oven, but you know, that's just how they do it in this one. As Montel would, Jordan would say, this is how they do it on a Friday night. <laughs> now, this is possibly one of the best parts of this RV. When you are sitting on the Murphy sofa, you can sit right here. You can make exact hard lock eye contact with the person sitting on the toilet and you can establish dominance by saying who's going to blink first now that is not for the faint of heart but it's also a really good way if somebody did want to stay for the weekend to to make them leave especially considering you don't exactly have the sleeping space for guests in this rv but again that's a a very high level pro tip it's not something that i think people should just uh, attempt willy-nilly the space around this toilet though Buddy, that's fantastic. I don't know that it gets much better than that. That is extremely well done. And it's a rectangular shower, not a radius shower. And being six foot nine tall, you'll kind of notice here that like I'm able to very easily cleanly stand in the shower, even wearing my big thick soled shoes. So I think that's kind of cool. And I just noticed we got a little bit of a put your dukes up octopus fight club around the corner. So at least there is some place to be able to hang uh, a wet towel or two when you uh, are, are done bathing. So I think that's pretty slick. Now this does have the simple four inch fart fan that almost, almost all travel trailers have. Um, that's an easy thing to upgrade, but that's all you're gonna find here. And a window always somehow really just sort of, it churches up the joint. It makes the bathroom look and feel uh, awful nice, you know? Now looking over here on the left, the, uh, the, the bathroom vanity and everything is kind of at a tricky angle for me to get to record here for you. But I also want to show you the extra linen space and storage and everything this has right here. Now, you might notice 
how that linen cabinet does not go all the way back against the wall. That's because underneath the linen cabinet, there's actually a, uh, a little mini outside uh, camp kitchen, including an outside fridge, which has to find a way to be able to ventilate. So it actually ventilates up behind that cabinet, which is a little bit unconventional, but also I really appreciate that they had the, uh, you know, the, the wherewithal, which is not a word I get to use very often that I really enjoy, to uh, be, be cognizant of that factor, basically. But I told you we'd circle back to point out some things that we're going to look at here on the bed because basically this RV is always in road mode. You know, there it's awesome for stealth mode camping. If you just need to pull in somewhere and just, just hop in the RV, like if you pull into your campsite late at night, you don't even need to unhook from the truck on this one. You can just back in. You don't even got to get it totally straight. Just get in your site, get out of the road and park. But when that mattress is down, you see that it leaves a lot of room back here, which one of the nice things about that, it makes it kind of easier to get up here and sort of walk around the bed. Although with the big deep side stands, I don't know that I really consider this a true walk around bed, but one of the other opportunities this can leave you. If you don't care about the Murphy bed, you're like, I wish I just didn't have a Murphy bed. I just want a real queen bed there. You could totally do that here. There's room to do it without interfering with anything else in the camper, but that means that you lose the Murphy sofa function. It's going to be a push and a pull, but if that's how you want to camp, go for it, man. I really need a haircut, don't I? Now, I think this is the smallest member of the Vibe family. And I mean, as you see here, they can get up to some pretty big size things. But this little, you got to be careful too of model numbers in the RV industry. Like it's called a 19, but tip to tail, tongue to bumper, it's uh, around the 24 foot mark. And that's still not so big that towing it around is going to be super scary, especially when you factor in, they're using those wide stance uh, stability axles. And if you're not familiar with that, what, the, what, the, what that setup does is it is a leaf spring setup, but by spreading the axles apart a little bit, uh, what you're getting effectively is uh, less sway and less wiggle while you're towing. Now, I don't feel that system is a uh, replacement for a proper anti-sway weight distribution load distributing hitch. I think it's a supplement to that works very nicely. Now, these have power awning, power tongue jack, power corner stabilizers, uh, and they all come factory standard with a basic lead acid battery over here, a uh, group 24 battery, nothing too special, but it comes with a battery and a 200 watt factory solar package. And you see that battery disconnect right there. One of the cool things, if that battery is on there and the RV is just in storage, you can flip that disconnect to keep the, uh, like to shut the fridge and the lights off and stuff like that. But the solar package will keep tending the battery. And as a result, you will, well, tend to have much greater lifespans on your batteries. I just noticed, I think this is one of, uh, along with the fact that, you know, the Bendy Bed Murphy Bed has its own set of challenges. I can only estimate, I don't know this for certain, but due to the location of the kitchen and the bathroom in relation to that wide stance axle system, it does look like we have a two-headed sewer monster here. That's one of the only kind of half knocks I have against this camper. It's just that it's not a single sewer connection, which I think a lot of folks uh, would prefer. Now, we're going to get back over to the campsite of the RV, where again, they do have that single Euro window, but you might notice not all the windows are that way. Just like your, your primary, like, dining seating window where you might want the most airflow kind of cruising through. That's where they put those. Um, they've done some revisions over the years to enclose and privatize the little docking center right here, which I think is a nice little touch. And another thing that helps keep the weight in check on these is that they are using uh, a welded aluminum cage structure under the bed. It doesn't exactly like, it's not gonna improve the lifespan of the RV as compared to wood decking. I think it just helps uh, eliminate a little bit of weight and keep that cargo capacity cranked up there. And that's really one of the other really cool aspects of this RV is that, uh, you know, it's small, light, and no slide but they're using um, the same size axles that they use on some of their bigger RVs. So as a result, what that means in English is that you have a very respectable cargo carry capacity on this, frankly, better than some uh, like travel trailer toy haulers that I've seen, which is ironic and almost backwards, but it's true. Now, one of the other kind of uh, factors on this one is it does have a small awning. Because it's a small RV and you have that big baggage door up front and they standardize their little mini camp kitchen on every single model they possibly can. I think the 28RL is the only one that doesn't get it. That means that this RV does not have a big awning. But if it is a rainy day, 
you can open that awning plus you've got that euro window that also tilts open and you can always keep some fresh air rolling in and out which i think is very very cool now under that little breakfast bar they had just a little pocket of space and they applied nerdism number 37 which is not an ounce of space gone to waste and they used every little nook and cranny they could but they also gave it this little drop down drawbridge style door which can be very useful like if you want to turn it into the uh the margarita station <laughs> at the campsite you might notice there's some tv hookups on the left which means you do have a place to plug in that blender over there um you can use it for a variety of things or just keep it shut it just depends on you now again you do have that wide stance stability axle system which takes a lot of the herky jerkiness out of towing i do want to be clear about the fact that these are running on import tires uh they're not goodyear radials or something like that so if that's a uh concern factor for you you might want to to sort of factor that into your total purchase decision and your total cost of ownership that's a uh, a major thing that i encourage people to kind of look into what is the total cost of ownership with an rv and part of that let's l ignore this vibe i'm going to teach you how to fish here real quick if you're shopping any rv at any dealership what you need to do is say okay what if i was going to come in with literal cash dollars greenbacks um how many of those do i have to put on the table to walk out with that rv and understand if you try to tack on some kind of hidden fees after that i'm not going to pay you one more cent what is the total all in cost of this that's how you need to shop i see people on facebook all the time take a screenshot of a dealer's website that has any price on there and say is this a good price well i don't know I don't know what kind of fees they're gonna tack on to you. So until you fully smoke that out, there's really no way of knowing. So that's a little bit of how to fish there. Now, as I was talking, we went past that standardized mini camp kitchen. Did you notice that was an induction uh, cooktop, which is kind of an interesting thing here. Somebody the other day said, why don't they do induction inside and propane outside? Wouldn't that make more sense? And you know, they might be onto something. I think that might make sense. Now in the sink, you saw that little coil hose and kind of like garden sprayer head. That's where that hooks up right there. So it's not hot and cold water, but it is a higher pressure sprayer port that you can utilize. Now these do have a fully walkable roof and you can see that they're prepped and ready for a telescopic removable ladder that is naturally not included. And then up top there, something else that you have uh is a uh, a white shroud on your air conditioner which actually if you look over here in the distance you can see more easily on that other vibe model a white shroud on the air conditioner will help it soak up less heat from the sun and just operate more effectively um additionally you've got a 200 watt solar package up there with a 30 amp charge controller so if you do feel like expanding on that a little bit you could now a couple other details here before we wrap up tankless on-demand water heater so nobody oh by the way that's also a 60,000 BTU water heater not everybody realizes that not all on-demand water heaters are created equally that's one of the that's larger than I see manufacturers using a lot of fifth wheels so they're actually using a very high output on-demand water heater so what that means if someone wants to take a shower and someone's running hot water in the kitchen you're not fighting one another it can actually keep up with that supply the underbelly is also enclosed uh, another step beyond that, these also have factory standard holding tank heaters, which doesn't make it a magic four seasons Arctic camper, but it sure doesn't hurt for extending the season or getting through a cold snap. All right, everybody, it's your time now. I've talked enough. Let me know what do you think about this one? Where did they nail it? Where did they fail it? Um, what is the one thing you don't want them to change? And what is the one thing if you could wave a magic wand and alter today, right now, what major change would you apply to this RV? What is your uh, personal wish list? Now, I'm gonna leave you a link in the video description to see if we have these in stock and where they might be parked. And in the meantime, I've got a whole bunch of other stuff here for me to go capture today, um, ranging from you know big to small couples models to family campers and all kinds of things. Vibe is a brand that once again, they have really, um it, they, they've improved steadily over the years and they were not as good as they are today i think this is a very solid product that really kind of caught me off guard and i didn't expect it to be as good as it is especially this little model so until next time take care stay safe have fun and happy camping everyone enjoy those good vibes Ugh.